In this video, I'd like to show you five different methods for swapping colors in your color infrared photos in Photoshop. Before you swap colors, it's important to set a good white balance. I'll link to a video that will show a whole variety of methods for getting a good white balance in your photo. And then once you've got a white balance, then you can swap the colors. So let's look into Photoshop and start with those five methods. So the first method, uh, and the one that I learned first, is the uh, channel mixer method. So we'll click on adjustment layers and select channel mixer. Here in the channel mixer, we will uh, go to the red output channel and we will set that to zero. And then in the blue output channel, uh, the blue part of the red output channel will set to 100. Then in, we'll switch the output channel to blue and then here set red to 100 and blue to zero. So that is the first method of uh, swapping out our colors. And so we can see that that produces a bit of a teal sky and a orangish yellow uh, foliage in the trees. All right, so let's go to the second method. The second method is to make a duplicate of your background. So to do that, I'm gonna hit Control J, and then I'm going to invert uh, that by hitting Control I. Now that I've done that, I need to change the blend mode. So I'll select the blend modes and I will select color. You can also select hue. They both pretty much do the same thing. So color gives me a uh, my, my swapped colors. I've got a little bit more of a natural blue sky, but then a still have that um, uh, orangish foliage. So that is the second method. So I'll deselect that. The third method is to use hue and saturation. So I will click on adjustment level and select hue and saturation. Uh, right up here, I'm on the master level of, of all of the, uh, the, the different hues. And here, I'm just gonna take the hue slider and go all the way to 180. And that will bring everything over. And now everything is swapped. So that is the third method. We will deselect that. The fourth method uh, is to use curves. So I can use a curves adjustment layer. Uh, and then it, with curves, let's give me some more space here to make room. So with curves, what I need to do is swap the, the in, basically do another inverse. So if I take the top highlight and I drag it all the way down, we'll see now that everything is black. And if I take the, the, dark, the darkest point and drag that up to the top, now basically I've inverted the image. So pretty similar to the invert method. Uh, now if I come down to the layer and select the blend mode, I can set that to color and we have a very similar result. So that's our fourth method. Then the fifth method uh, is also similar. This is the levels and we're gonna swap levels. So if I start with the blacks and I just drag that up, I'll drag it not quite all the way. Then I'll take the whites and drag those all the way down and bring the blacks all the way up. And I now have an inverse uh, image again. And I will do the uh, blend mode color and that will get me this method. So there's five different methods. But how do they compare to each other? Which ones uh, look the best um, and, and give you a good starting point for the next step of your uh, creative color editing process? So I've done a comparison of all of these. And let me just drag this down here and open up my comparison so we can take a look at it. I'm gonna just group these others out of the way. So now in my comparison, we can look at the various methods side by side, and I've, I've carved out a mask so we can take a look at each one. So first of all, let's take a look at the channel mixer. So there's a slice there where we can see the channel mixer, and that gives us that teal sky and uh, the green, I'm sorry, the, the orange foliage. The next one is the invert method, so invert a channel. And, uh, and then change the, the, the blend mode. And you can see that the foliage is pretty similar in, as far as the hue goes, but the sky is very closer, much closer to a natural blue sky compared to the channel mixer method. If we go to the third option, which is the, uh, the curved, um, in this case, um, well, th this was the, the last one I showed, but this is the curved inverted method. It looks very similar. And then the levels, uh, inverted, and then finally the hue saturation. So what you what you'll see here is basically these last four 
that are, that are all some variation on inverting. So either inverting a channel and color blend or inverting curves, levels, or even doing a 180 degree hue, satur hue swap with hue saturation all produce very similar results, probably identical results compared to the channel mixer method, which will produce different results. Now, at the end of the day, it may not matter which one you use. You can still add a, a hue saturation layer and, uh, you know, start ch changing either the master levels or individual hues uh, to get the colors that you like. There's no right answers to which one of these methods work. I like the invert method a lot because it is probably the fastest to execute with just a control J and a control I and then a quick uh, change of the blend mode and you're good. But it's it's very easy to set up an action for any of these uh, so that you can use any of these. So there you go. That is five different ways to swap channels, to swap your colors uh, in Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.